how many particles are released at a certain distance from a radioactive source? How often do earthquakes occur in different areas? What rate of reduction makes a species critically endangered? Counts are ubiquitous as a primary outcome in scientific research. In this video, we'll have a look at the first real model for counts, a Poisson GLM. As an example, let's consider an orchard of apple trees, each planted at different times. Here we want to know how the age of the tree correlates with the average number of apples it yields. The observations are then of 50 individual trees planted at different times. Since the outcome is a count, we'll try to model this with a Poisson distribution, which is the probability distribution of independent counts. In a Poisson GLM, we are estimating the effect of the explanatory variable on the rate lambda. So in this case, we're estimating the effect of age on the average number of apples produced. What happens if we were to simply fit a line through here? This model is continuous and counts are discrete, so would that be valid? Yes, actually. Unlike raw counts, the rate, the average number of apples, doesn't have to be integer. If a tree yields one apple every two years, the rate is a half. For two apples every three years, the rate is two thirds. So lambda does not need to take on discrete values. And we can have a nice continuous model going through these observations. However, since we cannot count a negative number of apples, the rate also cannot be negative. At its lowest, lambda is equal to zero for an average of zero apples per year. This is where a problem occurs. A line is not bounded to zero and infinity. It extends all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity. As a result, even within the range of our data, we start predicting negative rates. While counts are low at this value for age, we clearly still count more than zero apples on average, and definitely not a negative number. Besides, the Poisson distribution isn't even defined for negative rates. So this model cannot make any predictions below a certain age. Somehow, we need to fix this. We need something to restrict the predictions made by this linear function to only valid outcomes. This is the purpose of the final part that makes up a GLM, the link function. The link function transforms the linear predictor so that it will always output a valid value. For the rate lambda, that means we need a transformation that will ensure the outcome is never negative. In principle, we could pick any function that accomplishes this. Squaring does the job. Now there are no more negative values. But for every probability distribution in a GLM, there is one particular function with an attractive property. The canonical link is the only link function that translates the linear predictor directly to the mean of the chosen probability distribution. Besides having a nice interpretation, the canonical link function is also a lot easier to work with, something you'll see for yourself once we get to GLM regression tables. For the Poisson distribution, the canonical link is the logarithm of the rate lambda, which means we take the exponent of our linear predictor. That is why regression with a Poisson GLM predicts an exponential relationship between the outcome and the explanatory variable, at least if we use the canonical link and no further nonlinear terms. Exponential relationships grow very large, very fast. So in a few decades, we should be able to solve world hunger. And about 100 years later, all atoms in the observable universe will have been converted to apples. Unless, of course, we pay attention to the limitations of our model. This is no different than before with ordinary linear regression. First, you can't just extrapolate beyond the range of your data, unless you have strong reason to assume the relationship holds there. And second, even within the range of your data, an exponential relationship is not a given, it is just an assumption. So in actual analysis, if you wanted to make any statements about this relationship, you would first have to perform diagnostics to see whether the assumptions implied by the model are in fact reasonable. But that's a topic for another video. If the assumptions are reasonable, if this model provides a reasonable approximation of the real life process we're studying, 
then we can do similar things like we did with ordinary linear regression, like expressing the uncertainty of the relationship with a confidence interval or predicting new observations with a prediction interval. In case you're wondering why the prediction interval looks like that, it's because counts are discrete. So a range of expected future counts is also discrete. For the confidence band, this doesn't apply because it's not about raw counts, but about the average rate at which we count, lambda. Since the rate lambda can take on any non-negative number, we also end up with a nice smooth confidence band. To summarize, in a GLM, we still estimate an intercept and a slope, which is why it's still called a linear model. But now we transform the resulting linear function into something that will always produce a valid prediction using a link function. If that prediction happens to coincide with the mean of the chosen probability distribution, then the link function is called canonical. In the example here, we use the Poisson distribution which means that if we flip this figure over, we can imagine a Poisson distribution running along the model. At any given value of age, we predict a Poisson distribution with a certain rate. Move to a different value of age, and we predict a Poisson distribution with a different rate. The canonical link function of the Poisson distribution is the logarithm of the rate lambda, which is equivalent to taking the exponent of our linear predictor. That is why regression with a Poisson GLM predicts an exponential relationship, at least if we use the canonical link and no further nonlinear terms. If this proves to be a reasonable approximation, then we can express the uncertainty of these estimates with a confidence interval, and we can predict new observations with a prediction interval. In the description you can find example code of a Poisson GLM in R and in Python. I've included three versions, one which just draws the model, and the others which draw either a confidence band or a prediction band. So how does this compare to other GLMs? In the next video we'll have a look at how a GLM can be used to model ratios.